Well, welcome, good morning for our senior living community. Well, we were gonna have two comedians on there, so we were one for two, so that's not a bad batting average. But <laughs> it's always good to hit a home run and get both. So Melissa, before we start, tell, tell our listeners who you are, what you do, and who you serve, and, and let's stay in the seniors laughing category. So I know you, so would that be okay? <laughs> That's fine, yes, yeah, I think you're, I do have a, a different day job, but by night, I love, I, I am a, I'm a, I'm a stand-up comic, I am a host, producer, and performer, and I serve the greater Atlanta area. So it's either corporate shows or community shows at senior living facilities or apartments or neighborhood communities. Um, yeah, so I produce comedy shows. Yes, I remember we met, we ran into each other at uh, your your kids' school. W w tell what school is that? Northwest North Classical Academy. Okay, Northwest Classical, and like it was, it was a great event because I, I I know of the school, but I don't know the school. And when I heard eighteen hundred people were on the waiting list, I said, "Dang, this is they must be doing some things right." So what's your what's your role at the school before we get into the comedy part? Um, so my boys attend the school and my role there is in volunteerism. So I um, help run the Parent Volunteer Association. I'm a uh, one of the presidents of the PVA. Awesome. Uh, we had a great conversation because I live in a senior facility. I'll say the average age is 80. I didn't think I would be living in a senior facility at my age. Not that I'm not a senior, but it's just a different experience. And we had a comedian that didn't really connect with our audience. So when we were talking, we were laughing about different things. And so it kind of spurred a couple things. That is bringing laughter to seniors on a regular basis. So Ken has been doing it for, I don't know, 50 years or a long time. Mm -hmm. And I promoted events with them and we've done events where we would bring the spouses together on Valentine's and we would just laugh and have a good time. So we're looking to replicate that. And the reason we want to replicate it is adult children are, are faced with a challenge. What's happening to their aging parents? Like, what are their needs in different phases of their life? Because I'm in an independent living, then it goes to assisted living, then the, then the last part is memory care. But okay. each time you're transitioning to a new role in your life, the kids have to be aware of what the needs are of the parents. So we wanted to bring the adult children together with their aging parents to be able to laugh from number one, but to be able to help them know what all the services that are available, because what you don't know, you don't know. And if you don't know that the things are out there or that your parents have moved into a different stage of their life, the quality of your life is affected. So, when we were chatting about, you know, helping ch seniors laugh, you you started to tell me your story, and we had you obviously on a podcast, so I learned a little bit about it. So, what we're looking to do is bring those adult children together with their parents. Kind of tell our viewers your role. Why did you get into comedy? Like, you're you're doing your day job, you're in your career, you're cranking it out. Uh, and then five years ago, something changed. What, why did you get into comedy? What well, interests you? I guess, yeah. What interests me was that I, I enjoy being on stage and doing public speaking. That was my, um, that was my initial motivation. And so instead of joining like a Toastmasters or something that's maybe more on the corporate professional side, I decided to tap into my entertainer slash actor you know, theater side and 
landed into a stand-up comedy class, which is um, with Lace Larrabee. She's amazing. She runs the only all-female stand-up comedy class in Atlanta. Uh, oh, Laugh amazing. Labs, check her out. Um, yes, I landed myself there and just really enjoyed connecting with the audience, uh, enjoyed writing relatable content, and uh, just sharing my story in a way that's fun and leaves people feeling good. So... Yeah, you know, there's nothing better than laughing. I mean, it's it. There's something it does for the soul when you're just laughing. Either you're laughing at yourself or you're laughing with other people. So I've seen in my experience with being in a senior community the need to get people to laugh. So when you when you perform, I'm just curious. Like, is it like like what? What fills your heart? Is it the laughter part, the creative part, or is it a combination of a lot of things? What really drives that 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 passion to to perform and make people laugh? Um, I think it's when I'm up there and I'm just being my authentic self and but just in a joyful, elated state and just having fun with people and making eye contact and seeing that they're having a good time and um, adding in a little bit of shock and, you know, it's just, it's fun. It's fun to give people what they expected, but also what they did not expect. So I don't know. I just, that's one of the things that drives me. And then just, you know, writing something that I think in my head is like, oh, that was really funny. And then, you know, testing it out and, you know, I don't know, just part of the research part of it where I go, okay, that didn't work as good as when I said it this way, you know? So I don't know. It's just, mm -hmm. it's fun. Yeah, it's challenging. But how like, often do you, yeah, how often do you think about your comedy part? Because you you have a day job, mm -hmm. and that's paying bills and doing all that. But you're when you come home and you're doing something else. I've always told people if you're not like super excited to do that that next thing at night, whatever it is, yeah, you will never do it because you're tired. You're raising a family. You're you're getting your your kids to school. You're you're doing all this stuff, and you work all day. You're you're putting your energy into that. Then you come home, and it's like if you don't if you're not super excited about what you're doing, it'll never last. So so is that like does that fill you in a way that has has developed that five year journey? I think so. Um, whenever I was younger, you know, I used to wait tables and bartend and do things like that. And I used to joke that I was out having fun, making money while everyone else was spending their money. Uh, but really, I was just out having a good time. And I've always been like, where's the party? I want to be there, but not to party or drink, just to be around people and have that energy. And so when I go out and I do comedy, I see my friends who also do comedy. Um, I see all of these uh, patrons, some are regulars, you know, it just, it feels like a very good social outlet. That's not a mom thing and it's not a corporate thing. I mean, it is professional. I, my, my flavor of comedy is professional, but it's not, I don't know. It's just, it's a lot of fun. And so, yeah, it totally fills me up to go in and, and just see people and have fun with them. And, you know, just the smiles on their face when they leave is just, so, I mean, it takes me all the way home. I'm driving home going, oh, that was so fun. You know, so. You know, after we met, uh, maybe a month or so after, I would ask people about you, you know, because you just kind of, because I could tell just in the conversations that we would have, it's almost like you hold back in a, a in a nice way your one-liners, your comedy. It's like it becomes natural to you. And so I'd ask two people, two ladies that know you, and, and their comment was very similar. When they're engaging and they see you like at an event, uh, say a school event, it has to be a school event because that's where they're seeing you. They said, it's like, She's wants to entertain, but she's holding back a little bit because you're not like wanting to get the spotlight, but you also comedy becomes natural to you. So they're all saying like she has the, the gun crop, I mean, cocked and ready to bring the humor. But sometimes yeah. she holds back and just gives a, a sound bite. So are you always kind of thinking of each 
each time you're having a conversation that there can be something funny thrown in there? I think, oh, now it's Ken. Oh, whoops, sorry. Yeah, um, no, it's <laughs> not that. I think when people find out that I do comedy, there's this certain, the air gets more calm and like everyone relaxes a bit. And most of the time I'm just listening to other people because they become so funny, you know? And I just am like, mm. what is this person going to say next? And so I'm always identifying like, I guess the humor, every, everybody in some way has some humor that, and I feel like when they're around me, they just, not that they're trying. I think it just comes right. out. Like, like you can always tell when someone's trying to be funny and you're like, okay, you're trying to be funny. Like, and sometimes they are funny, but most of the time they are not, it's not funny, you know, cause it's not real, but when they just, something yes. comes out of their mouth, that's just like, what? Um, so when I'm engaging with others, I'm I'm constantly just in awe at the humor that everyone has inside of them and, and the ability right. to just kind of not take themselves so seriously. And I feel like when people are around me, that gives them the permission to be a little silly instead mm -hmm. of always being buttoned up and, you know, proper. Um, but, you know, there's a time and place. So you just can't let completely loose, especially at a school. <laughs> we can't, you know, we have a certain decorum to uphold. But um, yeah, that's usually when I'm around people, I'm I'm just always laughing and smiling, but not because I'm funny. It's just, it gives them permission to kind of be fun. I don't know. And I just, no, and I feel like you, you know can... what? I, I totally agree with you because I didn't really frame that question right or describe that question right. You're right about the listening because I believe it too. I see it over here that they're absolutely hilarious. And when you get in those environments that you can kind of have some fun, it is kind of cool because you're not trying to do it, but they're the, the source of the laughter, but you kind of just maybe playing off it. So I never, never yeah. thought of it that way until you described that. That is that my, for our viewers, forget about my first question. That is really what I think the <laughs> essence of it. So I want to get down to, since we don't have Ken on here, maybe we'll have him. He's on vacation down in Florida. And technology yeah. is always a challenge. So he's not having a bad time because if you're in Florida on spring break, Kevin, and I know where he is because his uh, family has a place down there. So they go down there all the time and spring break is a popular nice. time. for them. Yeah. So Ken, we're, we'll, we'll give you a shout out, but we'll have you back uh, to promote the event. So May 21st. Yes. What we want to do. I'm making sure it's is, in the account. Okay. So yeah, because I texted my church, Grace Church. It's in it's in black. Okay, yes. good. Good. And and she said, well, the uh, Gabby said, yeah, verbally it looks good. I'll confirm it with you tomorrow. Yes. So when I, once I get absolutely firm in in the calendar then we know we have it but what we want to do because we were talking a little bit before we came on we want to really bring the kids the the yes. the adult kids yes. to have fun with their parents to yes. laugh with them and to have somebody like you and Ken to have that and we actually have a guy it's lauren's dad so okay. next time you see lauren lauren's dad i'm in a small group with him yeah when you said that he like the he listen like a person listens and then they play off of the whatever the conversation this is what he is it's like when i told him about it another person said larry that would be perfect for you to kind of do up there because he's a senior like like myself. Yeah. And so he's cracking these. We were talking on Sunday. He's throwing these senior type comedy out yeah. there. I'm going, Larry, oh, my gosh. So you got to be a part. I don't know how, but yeah. you got to be a part because, you know, only a senior knows a senior, but you have to have had years and years and years of really loving that kind of environment yeah and and he does 
because I mean, with three girls, you got to have a good sense of humor because yeah. it just it has to come with it. So, so we'll we'll figure out all the details of it. But I want to let our audience know because let me get a banner up here. Okay. okay, so East Cobb, Cherokee, the ACAP community is adult okay. children. Oh. Ad Oh, adult children with aging parents community. So this community wants to bring the two together. Yeah, that'd be and so, so cool. What we're going to do is we're going to partner with them. They don't even know we're partnering with them yet. So, so <laughs> we'll have to ask them. But it's a perfect <laughs> if it's a perfect partnership. Good. When they, everybody loves comedy. Everybody. I don't. If you tell me somebody doesn't love comedy, then. We just have to put them in a different category. They're too serious. So, but they want to bring the two together, just like we're talking about. So we're going to figure out how to, how to, how to partner with them. Okay. Whether we do food or not, we'll figure that out too. But I want our audience and our viewers to know that Melissa is the driving force behind this because this is, we want to do it at all senior centers. So this event, I think we can fit about 200. So this event will be a bigger event, but we want to have smaller, what we call senior laughing opportunities or whatever yes. we call it, at facilities that like on a Monday or Tuesday where, you know, the weekends can get kind of busy because people are performing. And, yeah. So in the senior facility, we're not working. So weekends aren't as a premium it is for the, the day. But it'll be after work because we want to bring their kids to it. So yes. they can laugh with mom and dad and have a good time and just enjoy uh, laughter and laugh at themselves and have people like yourself kind of administer that. I'm not, yeah. but facilitate that. Yes, that'll be so much fun. And have a night with their parents and the parents yes. introduce their friends to their kids. That's always fun, yes. right? Yes. And maybe the kids will then become friends with each other. It's just a, a very good community building um, initiative for sure. And so we're on the Senior Living Podcast. So all my senior living facilities, if you want to host seniors laughing night at your facility this would have to be after may this would have to be down the road get a hold well, we're going to try and put your 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 email up there melissa maybe i don't know we'll figure out this okay yeah but, that's fine. but we want them to say hey raise their hand and go hey i want to be a part of that because we want to get our seniors with their kids and laugh and have a good time and just enjoy it. I had, a. this is kind of a side note, but I had a, a, a person on the other day and he's been doing it for 20 years. He retired down here. His wife, Laura works in hospice. And so he's performs, he sings. So he'll do Frank Sinatra. He'll do all. And he's, he's like booked way out there. And they all say to him, like he went to a place in, and I don't remember the name, but it was in Buckhead. And you know how you usually can tell whether the audience respond to you or not? Yeah. So he's like, uh, this group didn't connect. He's going, I'll write that one off. This was like 10 years ago. So the activities director calls him up the next day and goes, they loved you. They want you back. And he was going, what? They look like they wanted to get me out of there, not be. So sometimes you don't even know how much oh, yeah. somebody is enjoying it, but they they love the time of really having somebody come in, reminisce about old songs, sing old songs, and just have a good time. Yeah. So I can imagine if we get them laughing, oh my gosh, if singing really hits their hearts and fills their hearts, I think laughing will absolutely be awesome. Yeah, I think so too. I, I know, I know it will be. So, so it'll be fun. It'll be a lot of fun. All right. And so I want I you. Oh, go. Go ahead. Melissa. No, I was just going to say, I think that communities need this. You know, having an outside 
company or initiative that comes in and kind of handles the event planning and, and lifts up something really great because the day to day job of a community organizer is it has so many different, you know, they're pulled in so many different directions. So having someone dedicated to come and have a plan for their community is just, you know, invaluable. Awesome. I agree with you. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So I did get your name in there. Tell me, give me a contact, like an email. Is that the best? Yeah. Melissa.serafi at gmail.com is okay. fine. All right. So let's do that. And then we'll get really organized here by the next time, Melissa. <laughs> yes. At, um, okay. So it's your name. Okay. Okay. Let's see if you're talking to a dyslexic guy. So if I don't spell it right the first time, we'll have to do it the second time. All right. At um, Melissa.Sarathi at Gmail. Okay. I think I got it. I'm going to put it up on the screen and you're going to tell me if it's right. Okay. 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 Yep. That looks good. Dang. Holy mackerel. I got, I got that right. That's an accomplishment. Okay. So I want you for this particular episode, I want you to, if you're a listener and you know a senior living facility that could use some laughter, I want you to share this video with them and obviously get a hold of Melissa because she knows all the comics. It's not all of them, but you know a lot of them. I know some amazing comics. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah, exactly. Yes. And then we'll have Ken back to, because I, I want him to, when we did these, um, Valentine events, they were unbelievable success yes. because everybody was getting together. Instead of being like at a bar or going to a restaurant yeah. where you couldn't even get seated, you went to an event at a church where you could create laughter and just fellowship and break bread, eat and all that. So it was it was so good that we were at North star and we were talking about this. I said, that's eh, probably bigger than we could do. Cause they have 1200 people that they can fit in there. I said, I don't know if we could put 1200 in a couple of months. So I said, we'll have that down the road. But they said, yeah, we used to have Ken here and it would be on the weekends and we would do a big event. And, and I said, yes, that's what we want to get to, but you got to crawl before you walk. Oh, yes. So, what a, we are we are so fortunate that Ken is going to kick this off for us in May at Grace yes. Church. Very excited. Yes. So, Ken, sorry, couldn't been on the podcast. <laughs> we'll, we'll get you on the next one as because yes. we got to promote. I'll yes. be responsible for promoting. I've got a number of different podcasts, so we're going to put everybody that's connected and we're going to make sure it's not a well-kept secret come May. Yeah. May the 21st. I tell you what, I just thought about it. I'm going to flash up on the screen the date too. Let me put another banner together. So Melissa, t tell just why I'm doing that. I can't multitask and talk. So t it's just, again, I want you to share what, what is, what is putting together comics what, what do you like about that? Uh, about producing um, yeah, a, a show? Yes, yes, yeah, booking comics. Well, <laughs> my favorite part is, I mean, we do have so much talent in Atlanta, our local comics. And we have local comics that tour, you know, the Southeast region, the, 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 U, the whole U.S., like here centrally hubbed in Atlanta. And my favorite part about producing comedy shows is that I, you know, adore and am fans of these comics and I get to bring them first of all I get to bring them into my space and I I don't care how many times I watch them perform they're always amazing um but also giving them a space to you know work their craft and share and get the fulfillment that they get from doing what they do but yeah I just I love curating a comedy show of of you know diverse talent and uh, you know different stories and different styles and yeah, bringing them all together in a room to just share with everybody. It's its a lot of fun. That's probably my favorite part because it's like I get to produce a party every time that I put together a show. <laughs> Dang, I love that. I yeah. love that. That You know, and I'm going to put this up 
because I put five ish, but I don't know if it'll be six or, but it'll be after work because we know that the kids do work and they yes. do have jobs. Yes. So given the traffic in Atlanta and all that kind of stuff, we'll figure out something the time, but put it on your calendar, May 21st, Grace Church, which is right by Town Center Mall. So it's centrally located in Kennesaw. That's where we'll we'll hold the event. And if it if for some reason they say they can't do it, we'll figure out something else. But I think we will do it at their facility, which fits 200. So you got to tell some of your friends because that's a lot of seats. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna get it filled up. It's gonna be great. Awesome. So Melissa, I know you have a day job, and I know you have kids to get. It's spring. It's spring it's break. It's spring break. So okay. I, yeah, this today was fine because yeah, I've just I've got my job that I'll log into, and I work from home, so that's great. Awesome. Um, yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate you uh, in the spur of the moment coming on to share with our community the event coming up May 21st. And we look forward to it. And thanks so much for organizing it because yes. organizing is not easy. Yes. Yes. It, it, it is a skill. Yes. But thankfully, luckily for you guys, I am skilled at this. So Good. I <laughs> we're going to have fun. We're going to have fun. That's what I love. Okay. Thank you, Melissa. Appreciate you. Being All right. Bye, Pete.